Good morning, and good morning, and welcome. We're so glad to have you here today. <clears throat> today we celebrate the baptism of Jesus, and um, that's a really awesome day to remember our own baptisms. There's going to be a time in the opening prayer where we talk about breath, and I'm going to invite you to be very intentional about being conscious of breathing in and out during that prayer. The reason behind that is um, one of my high school friends, Tony Stark, has COVID. He's currently in the hospital. He's been sending messages. Uh, first, his family was on his behalf because he was in intensive care and could not. But um, he has been able in the last few days to take over writing his own post on Facebook again. <coughs> Excuse me. And he uh, talked about how after this experience, he will never ever again, you know, draw a breath without thanking God that he is able to breathe for himself. And that prior to COVID, he just you know, went around breathing all the time and didn't really celebrate that fact. And now that's really brought his attention to how, uh, how different, it, how, what an amazing gift our lungs are and the power to use them. So anyway, that's part of the reason that we're using that. The other is that it reminds us that, that God gives us life. From creation, we'll be hearing some of the creation stories this morning, that God gives us life and created this all just for us, and that that's a good thing. I want to say hi to the people out in the parking lot. Hi, parking lot people. Oh, sounds like a few more this week. Last week it was a little, little thin, but, and we have yeah, Facebook. Eleven. Eleven on Facebook, Phil says. Your microphone. My microphone? The static. Oh, okay. <laughs> Is that better? Ask them. <laughs> Is my microphone better, parking lot people? No. Okay. No. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on, everyone. Sorry, just, just one second while we... <laughs> Hang on. Let me turn off and turn on. Maybe that will help. I can go from the mic, from the pulpit. Let's try that. Now can you hear me, parking lot people? Uh, better. Okay, thank you so much. All right, now, <clears throat> now I'm tied to the pulpit all day. So that's a visual you wanted for this morning, right? <laughs> um, hi to Facebook, we're so happy to have you guys here. I wanna thank Gail Ruth, and I know she's had many helpers that have, uh, you know, first they made the Christmas decorations appear, and now they've made them disappear. I'm so grateful. Thanks so much for all of you. Uh, but Gail, especially for being on top of it, for calling me and saying, you know, this, I'm here and this needs to be done. Shall I do it? That's awesome. And I am so grateful for it. Also, I'd like to thank Lou Whelan for being here with as our lay assistant this week and for this whole month. Also, always to David Beck, to Phil and uh, outside to Tammy and John Boyer and Chris Ellis. And we're grateful for these people because without them, we could not possibly have a on a Sunday morning under these conditions. Yesterday, I ran into some people from Cedar Church at a funeral, <clears throat> and they miss not being inside. I know they do, but they understand, and they they know that we're trying to do our very best to keep them safe. And so, please be patient and uh, send each other cards and letters, call each other, 
reach out to neighbors, um, send them a text or whatever, just to let them know you're thinking of them. Because the people who have been here every single week for their most of their lives are missing so badly not being able to be together. So I ask you to take it upon yourself to make some calls this week and uh, make sure you're reaching out to each other, just as I continue to reach out to both congregations. Uh, I wanted to let you know that tomorrow morning I'll have a funeral for Bernadette Pence, a member of the Lutheran congregation. It will be graveside here at Cedar. Um, and I, uh, I have, this is, will be my fourth funeral since Christmas. So it's been a little intense in the last few, the last uh, week. So I ask you to keep me in prayer too, as we continue. Uh, just look, and none of these deaths were due to COVID, they were due to other things, but um, also yesterday I officiated a funeral for David Shellhammer. David was a member of Cedar. He was baptized here, I believe. Uh, no, he wasn't married here, but he was baptized here and, and attended here, uh, his, was confirmed here. And then uh, when he and his wife Nancy got married and had kids, they moved out to uh, Siegel's church. And he was a member there for many, many years. And, and uh, it was such an honor to get to be a part of his uh, final, his final experience with ritual and, and to be a part of that family. So I'm grateful for that. Now, my friends, blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose voice is upon the waters, whose mercy is poured out on all people, whose goodness cascades over all creation. Amen. Amen.
and exhale. As you inhale, concentrate on the notion of breathing in grace, the way we breathe in oxygen. As you exhale, imagine that you can let go of the one thing that you wish to give to God. Set the pace of your breath and set an intention that you can start to offer yourself your life to God a little at a time. A little at a time with every exhale. So we're going to pause for a time of quiet. Let us confess our sin, trusting in the abundant grace of God. Spirit of forgiveness, we breathe in the fresh scent of your love. We accept you into the depths of our bodies to awaken our desire for change and to displace our selfish impulses. God and Spirit, you are all around and within us now. Let us exhale and release whatever we hold within that will keep us from filling our lungs and our lives with your love. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. As surely as you continue to draw breath, you can trust that God is entering into your life one breath at a time. One yawn, one cloud, one breeze at a time. In the air, as close as air on your skin and in your body, is where forgiveness resides. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Amen. Glory to God, who has shown us the light. Glory to God in the highest in on earth. Peace, goodwill toward men. We praise you. We bless you. We worship you. We glorify you and give thanks to you for your great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, who take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You who take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You who sit on the right hand of God the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are holy, and you alone are Lord. You alone, O Lord Jesus Christ, are most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Today's Old lesson, old, old Testament lesson comes from the church, first chapter of Genesis. Out of chaos, God brings order. Out of the formless void, God brings light. This familiar story was good news for the Israelites who experienced much chaos in their history. It remains good news for us. God created and continues to create new life. Genesis part one, the, Verses 1 through 5. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good. And God separated the light from darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. Today's psalm is Psalm 29. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. Ascribe to the Lord, you gods. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due to God's name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thunders. 
The Lord is upon the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is a powerful voice. The voice of the Lord is a voice of splendor. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. The Lord makes Lebanon skip like a calf and Mount Hermon like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord bursts forth, forth in lightning flashes. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the oak trees rise and, strip, and strips the forest bare. And in the temple of the Lord, all are crying, Glory! The Lord sits enthroned above the flood, and the Lord sits enthroned his kingdom forevermore. O Lord, give strength to your people. Give them, O Lord, the blessings of peace. The epistle comes from Acts. In Ephesus, Paul encounters people who had received John's baptism of repentance, but had not heard of the Holy Spirit or a baptism in the name of Jesus. After Paul baptizes them, the Holy Spirit comes upon them and empowers them with gifts of the Spirit. From Acts chapter 19, verse 1. While Apollos was in Corinth, Paul passed through the interior regions and came to Ephesus, where he found some disciples. He said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you became believers? They replied, No, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Then he said, Into what then were you baptized? They answered, Into John's baptism. Paul said, John baptized with the baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in the one who was to come after him, that is, in Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. Altogether, there were about twelve. Mark's Gospel this morning reports the story of Jesus' baptism with some irony. The one on whom the Spirit descends is himself, the one who will baptize others with the Holy Spirit. Alleluia! A voice from heaven said, This is my Son, the Beloved, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to the Gospel of Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory, Glory to you, O Christ! John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole of Ju the Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my beloved Son. With you I am well pleased. This is the good news. Praise to you, O Christ. Holy God, creator of light and giver of goodness, your voice moves over the waters. Immerse us in your grace and transform us by your Spirit, that we may follow after your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. All right, for my children's, uh, for my children's time this morning, I need to make a wardrobe change. So just one second while I... I'm not going to undress, don't worry. Nobody's going to be, nobody's eyes will be scarred. No, Hang on. No wardrobe malfunction. <laughs> no wardrobe malfunction. 
This, this is more putting on than taking off, so don't you worry. Okay. And I know, uh, I know that those of you in the cars can't see. I'm really sorry because this is going to be quite the sight. Uh, it's a pink hoodie sweatshirt. It is. And David, what are on my feet? Cowboy boots. Cowboy boots. Okay. There, that's a visual for the people in the car. <laughs> it's quite the visual in here. So and sorry for missing it. <laughs> yes. So, boys and girls, and everybody, like, so life has not been easy, right? Oh, the last few months, and, and ever since March, I've just kept thinking, okay, we, we can get through this. If we get through this little next thing, then it's going to be okay. And then if we can get through this next month, it's going to be okay. And then if we can just get through a little further, it's going to be okay. And here we are almost a year later. And I know you're getting tired of hearing it. I'm getting tired of saying it. But it is going to be okay. However, I've had uh, a number of funerals since August that have been Every funeral for me is difficult, even if I don't know the person, it's hard. But I've known some of these people very well, and I've loved some of them for years. Um, and so, it's been hard. And even though I'm an adult, I'm an adult, and I'm mostly grown up, um, part of me still wants to be three and to lay down on the kitchen floor and to have a, have a tantrum and to say, I don't want to do this. Because even adults want to have tantrums sometimes. And God understands that and God knows and loves us anyway, right? So um, ever since I became an adult, well, since my age became adultish, I wasn't so much adult at the time, but ever since I grew too old to lay on the floor and have a tantrum, one of the things that I did to make myself feel better was put on a hoodie, okay? I don't know why. It, I like to wear my hoodies ginormously sized, as you can see, because it fits over my robe and my dress and my everything. Uh, and hoodies make me feel safe. Like I can put up the hood if I want to. If I don't, if I want to ignore people completely, see David, I can't even see you. Can't see Lou, totally. See, if I don't want to see anybody, I can blind, I can just take everything away. And if I buy them big enough, which sometimes I do, they can be a tent in case I really need one in an emergency. But hoodies for me, they, uh, see, and they have this great little, look, they have this awesome pouch where you can store keys and your cell phone and uh, a snack if you need one. And they just, you can keep your hands warm. Oh, their hoodies for me are perfection. They make me feel safe. They make me feel strong. Are they the most fashionable choice? No, they are not. But they make me feel good. And so, when things are hard, I put on a hoodie. I put on footwear that makes me feel powerful and strong and, you know, like I'm standing on solid ground. So that, hence the cowboy boots, because we know I'm from Kansas. And uh, yeah, pressing if I could get my leg up there. Can I get it down is the question, my friends. There you go, I made it. All of this is to say, whether you're a toddler or whether you're much older than that, it's okay. It's okay to be afraid right now. It's okay to be worried right now. It's okay to be tired of having to deal with a pandemic and death and whatever else in our lives that we're dealing with. The thing to remember is that God loves you so very much and that when you were baptized, God said the very same words that came out of that cloud. 
You are my child. You are my beloved. With you, I am well pleased. So whatever you need to get you through, whether it's a hoodie or a cookie or some footwear that makes you feel strong and powerful, you do that, that this week, okay? And know that God loves you so much. Amen. <clears throat> All right, this hoodie is incredibly hot, but I'm going to wear it because we need to keep moving on. And uh, also because I have, the, I'm going to whine at the beginning of my sermon, uh, the beginning of my sermon, a little bit, eh, I'm not whining really, but you know. So anyway, let's be in the spirit of prayer, shall we? How long, how long, how we long to be affirmed, oh God. How we long to be told that you love us and that you value us. To hear those words are so good. And sometimes we're afraid that they aren't true. So strengthen our hearts to hear your voice speaking those words to us. Open up our hearts to cling to your all-embracing love. Amen. So um, this week I had a graveside service here at the church. Uh, Robert Heinzelman was here as the funeral director Robert Heinzelman and I have done, uh, you know, we've known each other for many years now. We've done a couple of funerals that were very unusual together, and we've always joked with each other that, you know, when we when we retire and write our books, you know, th this is going to be one of the one of those things that is going to be in the book as a, an illustration of how weird life can be some days if you're a funeral director or a pastor. So sometimes when you're a funeral director or a pastor, you have to do, usually when you come in to do a funeral, even though you don't know the family well, they're very glad to have a pastor there. They're happy that you're there to tell them it's gonna be okay and to give them some direction, just like the funeral director. Here's how things go, here's how you do things, here's how lots of people like to do this, and, and they take comfort in that fact. Sometimes, Though uh, some people in the family, or, or one person, doesn't agree that this is how things should be. And, um, and so as a pastor and as a funeral director, sometimes you have to do what you know the deceased wanted to be done. And in this particular case, both Robert and I knew that the deceased wanted a Christian burial. It was very clear, it was prepaid, it was all prearranged. But one, one member of the family was struggling with that, and, and I think more, more than anything, they just didn't want to have to say goodbye. They didn't want a funeral because that was too final, and I totally understand that. But there was some um, yelling and uh, hollering and name calling at the graveside, and that breaks my heart. But one thing that, that got yelled at me was, uh, how dare you? I told you you weren't wanted here, how dare you show up? And I didn't say this to the person because they couldn't have heard it at the time and they were in pain and hurting, and I understood that. But here's how I dare do those things. I dare because God called me. Because God called me and other people that I trust greatly ordained me. They laid their hands upon me and said that God was choosing me, just like God had chosen them, to be in this subpart vocation. And sometimes it's hard. Sometimes you make people angry. Sometimes you make people sad. Certainly a lot of the decisions we've had to make this year have made many of you sad. And I know you're not angry at us, but I know that you are, but I feel the pain that you're feeling. So today is just a little bit about why I do do what I do. On this particular Sunday, in a normal time, we would approach the font. Everyone in the congregation would come before the font and they would reaffirm their vow 
autism. But there's nothing unusual, there's nothing usual about our current situation except for how unusual things continue to be. But this affirmation of baptism, this belongs to us in our baptism as well, as I said in the children's sermon. Those words, you are my child, my beloved, with you I am well pleased. The baptismal waters named us as God's beloved with whom he is well pleased. And when and through whom have we experienced over the years affirmation? I experience affirmation all the time. From you guys and that's a good thing but I know not everybody gets to be a pastor and gets to be involved in the little details of people's lives so perhaps reminding yourself that you are part of God's beloved family perhaps that might help us honor each other as God's family, each other as God's beloved children. Now, when we baptize people, there are expectations and there are questions that I always have to answer for family members. Because whenever we draw near to God's promises in the promise one, the spirit of baptism the spirit and baptism become big signs and symbols of God's affirmation, not just of Jesus, but of us. And so the grace of the words spoken from heaven aren't restricted to Jesus. For in Christ we are those whom God loves and with whom God is pleased, and such love affirms us as God's own. Beloved. The voice from heaven had proclaimed as the baptismal waters of the Jordan rolled off Jesus' body. Beloved, the voice named him. As he prepared to begin his public ministry, beloved was spoken with such power that it would permeate Jesus' entire life and teaching. Beloved, he would name those who he met who were desperate for healing and for inclusion and for hope. Beloved echoing through the ages and continuing to name those drenched in the waters of baptism. Beloved child of God. That's who we are. Beloved and precious children of God, beautiful to behold, that concept blesses us. And it goes with us. And, and this week, it certainly gave me the courage to do what I needed to do to honor the person, what I knew the person wanted. And it challenged me to ask what it means that I've been named by God, that we've all been named by God's grace. with such a power that it won't ever come undone. As I remember the baptism of Jesus, how I will reckon with the fact that I, that we, have shared in the same baptismal waters. And that in the sacrament of baptism, members of the body of Christ, we too are named as beloved children of God. How are we going to live in such a way that others know themselves named by God and beloved by God, especially those in society, in our church family, in our own families, that have come to think that they're less than loved, less than children of the one who created them. In the psalm today, we heard that the cedars were broken in the psalm. I thank God for the strength of this cedar, Cedar Church. I know that even though things have been tough, that it won't be broken, not ever. Because there are too many good people over the years who have given their all to make sure that it stands strong. And I know that you guys will continue to stand strong right beside us, even though you can't be right beside us. That you're with us in heart, that you're with us in spirit, that you're 
continuing to send donations, that you're continuing to make sure that the ministry of this church goes on. Friends, in the coming days, I pray that the waters of our baptism cling to us. That in our depths, we can see our reflection, a reflection of who we are, a beloved child of God. And from our depths, we reflect to others their true nature, and they can see themselves in our face as a beloved child of God. For that is who we are. Beloved, precious to God, and beautiful to behold. And for all those things, we give God thanks. May it be so. Amen. Let us pray. Have, Have mercy, O God, 
Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people spoken or silent for the sake of the one who dwells among us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. And hear us as we pray the prayer Jesus taught us. Our oh, Father, Father in heaven, Lord, holy be your, your name, your kingdom come, your will, your will be done, done on earth as it is heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against, 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 against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from the evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. And now, God, the Creator, strengthen you. Jesus, the Beloved, fill you, and the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, keep you in peace. Amen. Amen. the light of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.